Hello and welcome. My name is Jared Rasher. I have the What Do I Know Games and Geekdom blog. I also have the What Do I Know About Actual Play series that's on YouTube, where I run games for other people online. This series is going to be called What Do I Know About Running the Game. And what we're going to explore here is when I make mistakes, my choices for the games, whether I would do things differently, and just kind of break down and analyze the individual sessions that I've run. I may not do these after every single session that I've run, but every once in a while I would like to kind of check in. At the end of the entire campaign, I'm going to be doing interviews with the individual players and getting their perspective on how the campaign went, things that they liked, things that they didn't like. But right now, I just kind of want to look at, after running the zero-level session, how things are looking and what, where are my thought process is at. Uh, currently, uh, my thoughts on Zero Level in general are based largely on this and Dungeon Crawl Classics. Dungeon Crawl Classics is a much different aesthetic for Zero Level. While at Zero Level in Shadow of the Demon Lord, you don't have your class skills yet. You're not a super combat monster or a sneaky assassin or wielding divine or arcane spells. You are still a little bit more survivable. There's not a huge leap between how many wounds you can take and your general ability to do things. You have some skills. So it you don't quite feel as hapless at zero level in Shadow of the Demon Lord. It's, it's a lethal system in general, but the lethality doesn't jump up exponentially, you know, from, uh, from being level to being zero level. Whereas there is a huge gap between having some degree of competency in class skills and Dungeon Crawl Classics and this. I don't mean to draw that as the only analogy, but as far as zero level games, in my recent memory in the last few years, those are the only ones that I can really compare these to. There's other games where you start off not having a lot, but those are not really class-based or level-based games. So the direct comparison is is the only one that I can make there with Dungeon Crawl Classics. That said, Dungeon Crawl Classics is definitely designed to intentionally kill a ton of characters until you find one that you like. Shadow of the Demon Lord is meant to be lethal, but not necessarily lethal constantly for everyone when they're zero level. Um, this session we didn't have anyone die. We had a few people get badly injured. Um, one of those things, speaking of uh, things that I would have done differently, is at the last minute I swapped out a monster that was supposed to be within their ability to handle, but there's also another tough NPC in that same region. So at the last minute I swapped that character out. Looking back, I probably would have kept that one in because it would have been okay to have torn up a few more of the, uh, the PCs. So that's a case where I probably should have trusted the challenge ratings a little bit more but I wanted to err on the side of safety to get them a decent zero-level adventure. But um, there are challenge ratings in Shadow of the Demon Lord, and basically it would have been really challenging to leave it as I did leave it. It was still challenging. People still got injured. People still had to play it smart. But in retrospect, I could have actually gone a little bit harder on them, and I think they would have been okay. And that part of that's just not knowing when people are brand new to the system whether or not they're going to be able to pick up on tactics and doing things slow and I think people actually did do a pretty good job of tactics even when they weren't as familiar with the rules so I could have been a little bit harder with um, one of the monsters there towards the end um, one of the other things that I this is just a flat-out mistake is the frightened condition in Shadow of the Demon Lord not only imposes a bane on you which is you're rolling a d6 and subtracting that from your d20 total but the Frightened Condition also limits you to only taking uh, fast actions, which is you're only taking an action, you're not taking an action, and moving. And I didn't mention that at any time, and it actually, I, I knew it before I ran the session. It wasn't, you know, uh, clicking in my brain as I was running the session. So that was a mistake that I made. So if you happen to pick that up, yes, everyone should have only, if they were frightened, be taking a... Uh, be taking a, a single fast action instead of uh, taking a slow action in a turn. So hopefully putting this on video and holding my feet to the fire in that manner, I will remember that condition a little bit better in the future. Ironically, I was remembering that terrifying was also going to cause sanity damage, which was the thing that was mainly important to me. Um, the other thing that I messed up in this particular session is um, the blot itself. If you saw that segment of the video, the blot, um, I had initially 
in my notes, I actually written that it was only going to be a difficulty of five to hit the blot. In the session, we bogged down a little bit discussing this because um, I had forgotten that I put the difficulty at five and uh, we were aiming for a difficulty of 10 to try and hit it. And then at the end, people were spending fortune to try and hit it. That section bogged down a little bit, and it was a double mistake because I shouldn't have let it bog down that much. But the other problem was I should not have set the DC at five. I should have actually done something like adding three boons to the roll because unless you have an opposed roll like uh, someone directly acting against your skill or someone's defense in combat, every difficulty is supposed to be ten. I shouldn't. It was a, it's an artifact from another game that I was thinking it should be easier, so we'll go with a difficulty of five. And that's not what I should have been doing. I, to keep in the spirit of how the game is designed, I should have been saying, oh, you get three boons on this roll. So that was a mistake on my part. Um, that's something hopefully I won't do again in the future, and it's something that bogged the game down a little bit. I don't think it ruined the overall flow, but just for a few minutes there, we spent a lot of time figuring out whether something hit or didn't hit that should have been a lot simpler to resolve. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing between sessions that I've already talked to the other players in the uh, game about is in between individual tiers, like between starting and your uh, novice tier and between novice and expert, etc. Between those tiers, we're going to have a time jump of about a year just so that we have at least, you know, three years or more going that this time frame happens in. Between the uh, individual adventures within a tier, we're going to have about a month time jump between them, and we're going to be using the optional uh, upkeep rules that are in the Forbidden Rules supplement. Part of why I'm doing that is just to make sure that there is there's sort of a feeling of urgency, but there's also a feeling of progression. So we don't have people that were people that had just really basic uh, professions and skills as commoners, and then a month later are wielding these spells that can rend open the fabric of reality. I like for there to be a little bit more of a progression, and the way Shadow of the Demon Lord is structured, since you're supposed to have an adventurer at each level, I think it's well suited for being able to advance the time frame in this manner. So we're going to be rolling downtime in between sessions, and at the beginning of the session, I'll ask for people to pay their upkeep, which is you know a simple thing to see whether or not you know you start off the adventure having been scraping on the streets and barely surviving, or whether you were living the high life in between sessions. Um, and we'll just we'll do that between sessions, and we'll fill in some details based on what the downtime rolls do. The downtime tables in Shadow of the Demon Lord are absolutely great. Uh, they have some really varied results. They're really wild. You probably wouldn't want them for just any campaign. You can basically get murdered in between sessions and be resurrected or turn into something undead. There's all sorts of really fun results on those downtime rolls, and those are kind of some of the extremes. There's less likely ones like you made an enemy between times by getting into an argument or a fight with someone. But they're, they're a lot of fun, and I wanted to get a chance to use those as well. They don't impact the general gameplay a whole lot. Um, I also mentioned in the actual video, but we're using the simplified fate rolls for when somebody drops, because that way we're only rolling 1d6 to see what happens to them once they're incapacitated. Uh, it's not that I don't like the standard rules, it's that when I have a lot of new players that aren't used to the rules, I don't want to bog down the play session with explaining those. So I'd rather just keep it to one roll and keep that simpler. Uh, as far as party composition, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I have uh, two players that I've played with for years. I have three people that I have not played with before and I've only interacted with online. I think everyone gelled really, really well. I think there was a little bit of time when people were still trying to figure out who and what their characters were, but that's exactly what a zero-level session is for. So I was kind of glad that everything worked out as well as it did. Everyone seemed to have a good time. I hope that's the case, and I hope they'll let me know if it wasn't the case. Um, I think for the people that haven't played before, I don't think the rules were too tricky for them. There's a few little ins and outs of how like triggered actions and um, things like that might work that I don't think were as evident for people that haven't played before. But for the most part, I don't think those things make things drastically different. They just give you a few more options in combat, and hopefully we'll get everybody up to speed on that. Um, and part of that's a failing on my part. I just need to keep checking in and making sure that everybody knows the things that they need to know in order to get as much out of the game as they want to get out of the game. But overall, I think for having a group where uh, four of us hadn't gamed together at all, I, I think the overall group of 
of all of us seemed to work pretty well, and I was pretty happy with how that first session went, and I'm pretty excited about seeing the uh, future sessions. Uh, here at the end, I'd just like to wrap up and say, if you happen to be watching this, please uh, leave me questions here on this video or on any of the other videos where I have run games. I'll be happy to answer them. I might do a separate segment like this just to answer some of the questions that I've gotten, or I might address them in the individual videos. I don't expect that anyone outside of the handful of gamers that actually knows me will actually be watching these, but if I do get a greater re reach than that, uh, I will be thrilled and I will be glad to communicate with people. And I just wanted to say thank you again if you've taken the time to watch these videos. I really appreciate it.